Hi everyone, my name is Oli and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are doing a full fake tan routine. So I am basically gonna run you through how I prep for a tan, how I apply a tan, my favorite products, and how to maintain a tan and make sure it lasts a really long time. So I am very, very pale naturally, incredibly pale. So I will put a picture somewhere Ooh. here of me with no tan on. It makes me feel so much more confident. It makes my hair look so much nicer. It makes my eyes pop, makes my teeth pop. So I think a tan for me just really brings out my confidence and makes me feel healthy and um, glowy. Tanning isn't for everyone and that's absolutely fine. I'm not here telling people that they need to have a tan, it's just my preference and I have tanned pretty much every week for a good few years now. It's just something that I always do and it just makes me feel so much better in myself. So in the few years that I have been tanning, we've had some ups and downs. When I first started using fake tan, I used to use the Garnier um, like spray-on mist that comes in a can. It's like seven pounds. And I used to just apply it to my face. I would pull all my hair back, stand in my bathroom and just spray this dark tan all over my face and that would be it. That would be my tanning routine. So I'd be walking around at school. I was probably about 12 or 13 with like a really brown face. Like probably maybe even darker than how my face is now. And then these like super white hands like and when I say white I mean like like this color so so since then I feel like I have upped my game a little bit I am now 20 soon to turn 21 so I've been tanning for the best part of six or seven years now okay so the first thing that you need to do before any tan whether it's a spray tan or um, a mousse tan or a gradual tanner anything like that you need to do some body work so Girl. If you don't do your body prep properly, your tan will look crap. I am actually a qualified spray tanner as well, so I have got quite a bit of background knowledge on how tanning products work. First thing I would recommend doing is any hair removal that you plan on doing. So a lot of people, I think, shave after they've tanned. I get why they do that, because it is something I actually used to do. Sometimes when you shave and then you apply a tan straight away afterwards, you will find that the tan will sit in the pores and it will give you like these little um, dark spots all all over your skin. I'll see if I can find a picture on the internet and I'll insert it here. But yeah, so basically the best way to avoid doing that is all of your hair removal 24 hours before you tan. Once you have done all of your hair removal, you need to exfoliate. Exfoliate so much. Scrub all your skin off, literally all of it. So you're gonna need a tan erasing mitt. Now I've tried so many tan erasing mitts um, and I found this one, which is my absolute favorite. So this is actually called a tan eraser eraser you can pick this up on amazon i will link all of these products down below as well but you can pick this one up on amazon so it's actually a bit of a funny mitt because it's really really thin material it's got one pink side and one black side honestly this is the most amazing mitt i've ever used and it is literally like an eraser so when you're in the shower you let your skin soak for sort of 10 minutes let it get wet let it soak and then you just step out of the line of the running water and you literally just scrub and your old fake tan will literally just come running off. But this is also perfect for if you haven't tanned at all and it's just gonna really help to lift any horrible old dead skin off. So I definitely recommend this, it is reusable. If you find that this mitt isn't gonna lift your tan enough, you can also go in with this, which is a self tan remover. This one is by Simmerit. This is the best one that I've tried. I've used the Bondi Sands one before and it smelled a little bit bleachy. Obviously there's not gonna be bleach in it because they wouldn't sell that for your skin, but it smelled like quite chemically and it really, really stang. But I would definitely recommend this if you've got really stubborn tan and it doesn't wanna come off. And then one of my other favorites is the body scrubs from Primark. This one is the vanilla and brown sugar body scrub, three pound for a massive tub. They do a few different scents of these. Um, my other favorite one is the coconut. The coconut one is a little bit more gritty. Once you've done your 
full body exfoliation and all your hair removal, you need to moisturize. What I normally do the night before is I will shower, shave, do all of that stuff, and then I will moisturize my entire body. So what I use for moisturizing is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost. I have spoken about this in another video. I'll pop that video up here. That was my spring favorites for this year. Um, but the Hydro Boost range by Neutrogena is honestly my favorite moisturizing range that I've ever found. I've got very combination skin. Sometimes it's really, really dry. Other times it's really oily. These products seem to combat both issues really, really well and balance my skin out really nicely. So moving on to the most important bit, which is the tan itself. So the most important thing you do before applying your tan is making sure you've got no other products on your skin. You don't want to have moisturizer, deodorant, makeup, anything on your skin at all. Your skin needs to be shower fresh. I'll sleep in all my moisturizers overnight and then the next day I will wash them all off and make sure my skin is nice and dry and clean. After showering or bathing, you need to wait at least an hour before applying your tan. So your pores are all gonna be like more receptive because of the heat from the shower or bath. So I find that if I tan straight away after having a shower, I will get the tan settling in all my pores. I would wait at least an hour just for all your pores to settle back down so that the tan isn't gonna settle in them. Your next step then before tanning is applying a moisturizer to all of your super dry areas. So I normally apply moisturizer to my ankles, my heels, my hands, my elbows and my knees. It's not gonna stop the tan from taking completely, it's just gonna create a little bit of a barrier and stop it from grabbing really bad. So once you have applied your moisturizer as a barrier to all of your super dry areas, you are now ready to tan. Usually, I would have a spray tan. That is my go-to at the moment. Um, I basically do this because it's quick and really easy and my next door neighbor is actually a beautician so I go over there, I take my own liquid and we will just spray each other. So a bottle of spray tan liquid can range anywhere from about 20 to sort of 50 or 60 pounds depending on which brand you want to go with. The spray tan liquid that I use is Spartan Professional Spray Tan at 16% DHA. Spartan is actually a really, really affordable tan. The reason this caught my eye was, for one, the DHA level is really high. The DHA is actually the chemical in fake tan which causes your skin to go brown. Normally, most tanners 12% is the highest DHA you will get. So 16% is like a really high DHA level. Because I am so pale, like I was explaining earlier, I find that if I use a normal level dark tan, it won't get me the depth of color that I like. I do like to have quite a deep tan. So I really have to like layer up dark tans to get to the color that I like to be. Whereas this, I can have like one coat and it's good to go. Obviously having spray tans and using fake tan is so much better for you than going in the sun or than getting sunbeds. Please don't go and get a sunbed. It's so, so bad for you. Your skin will look like a million years old and obviously it can cause cancer and stuff like that. So I really, really, really urge you not to go on a sunbed or to spend too much time in the sun because it's so bad for you. Like I said, I get a spray tan with this every single week normally. Obviously because of the current circumstances in the world, I'm not able to leave my house, so I have had to go back to tanning myself, but I've picked up some new tips and tricks and I think it looks so much better than it used to when I used to do it. But yeah, I absolutely love the Spa Tan range. This is the darkest one they do, which is the 16%, and this massive bottle of spray tan liquid only cost me 20 pounds on Amazon. Now when I have a spray tan, sometimes I like it to be even darker. So I do also have this, which is called the Tan Truth Tan Intensifier. So these are basically just DHA drops. The drops are 34% DHA, and this is obviously 16%, and the highest that you normally would get is 12%. You can get at least 25 tans out of a bottle of this. So you think that's like 75p per tan? That's insane, that's so cheap. That's cheaper than some Moritz. Obviously right now, I can't go and have a spray tan because we are all on lockdown. 
I have now gone back to using Sun Moritz. Out of all of the rub-on tans that you can do at home, Sun Moritz has been my favorite for a really long time. Every single time I try a new tan, I just regret it. It never, ever, ever comes out as nice as Sun Moritz, and obviously Sun Moritz is super cheap. So my favorite tan to use for myself at home is the Sun Moritz Advanced Pro Formula 5-in-1 Tanning Mousse in Dark. This is honestly such a fantastic tan. They have recently changed the formula um, and now it smells so much better. It used to have like quite a strong smell. The smell now is quite fresh. It doesn't smell too, too biscuity. One bottle of this tends to do me two to three tans. One bottle of this, I think, hugely will cost you about seven pounds. You can get the original Summer It's formula for about three or four pounds, so it is cheaper if you get the original one. But I find the five-in-one um, mousse is actually a lot better. It gives you almost like a blurred effect to your skin, um, especially if you like it dark as well. I find this one comes out quite a lot darker. So I definitely prefer this one. It blends a lot better as well. So this one is definitely my preference from their range. What I will do, I'll do the same thing with the moisturizer, make sure I've moisturized all the dry areas. I will then put on a pair of black gloves. You can use like any gloves. These are just like disposable ones. Um, I have these in anyway because obviously I'm a hairdresser so I use these for when I'm applying colour. So I just pull out a couple of black rubber gloves um, and I'll pop those over my hands to stop my hands from getting mucky. And I will then use this skinny tan mitt. Now the skinny tan mitts are by far the best mitts I've ever used. They're a really soft velvet material. You just throw them in the washing machine after you've used them and I think they only cost like five pounds skinny tan ones literally stand up so well I've had these for years like literally like two or three years and I do keep picking up more but I haven't ever thrown any away because I honestly can't tell the difference between the new ones and the ones that I've used um, because they just stand up so so well so they are like a really soft flexible material um, and what's amazing about these is I find that tan never seeps through them either so they are just a really really good tanning mitt and they're also super cheap so definitely recommend the skinny tan mitt I'll then put three or four pumps of this on so I will usually start at my feet and I will work my way from my feet all the way up so I will do my feet and ankles then my shins then my knees then my thighs then I move on to my face to do my face I always like to use a brush so this is just like a foundation brush I only use this for tanning I never use this for my makeup and I make sure I wash it after every use you don't want fake tan to build up on this because then your tan's gonna go a bit mucky um, sometimes I think people like reuse their mitts and that's kind of gross like just put it in the washing machine. As soon as I've applied my tan to my face, I get a little makeup wipe and I make sure I take all the tan off my lips um, and any that has got in my eyebrows, I just wipe that off with a makeup wipe. Using a mitt, I will get some more tan and I will blend it all down my neck. Now my arms, I really layer up. Like I like my arms to look quite dark and my arms for some reason don't seem to take tan that well. So I really have to pack it on on my arms to get a nice deep color. So, so this is the color of my arm. You can see it matches my hand quite nicely, but to achieve that match, I have to put five layers of tan on my arm. That sounds like it's really like a lot and it's gonna be really difficult, but honestly, it's so quick to do. So this is why I put gloves on both my hands. I will just literally switch the mitt between my hands and just apply a layer and apply a layer and apply a layer until I've done five. It's gonna look super dark when you put that on. You might not need to do that. Some people, the tan takes really well on their arms. For me, the arms is like my problem area, I guess. Everyone seems to have like a different problem area as to where tan just doesn't wanna grab. For me, it's my arms. Like, tan just doesn't take that well to my arms. My legs is a different story. My legs literally go, like, ridiculously dark from one layer. But, yeah, my arms, I have to layer it up. So I do five layers on my arms. Once I've done my arms, I will grab my little brush again. And I will just check that there's no creasing here on my, like crease area so sometimes I find because obviously I am like whilst it's still drying I'm like going between the different arms sometimes that will crease a little bit so I just go back in with my little brush and I'll just blend that little crease out and it perfectly blends as soon as you go and wash your tan off you would not even tell 
that there had been a crease line there. So, don't know if you can see that there, but yeah, from blending that out, it means that no tan sort of sets in there and goes weird. Then my boyfriend actually comes over and helps me do all of my torso. So he'll just basically lather a load of tan all over my front and back. Um, if I was in a pinch and I had to do it myself, I could, but it's just easier having someone else to do it for you, to be honest, especially once you've got five layers of tan on your arms, you don't want to be like trying to touch yourself. So I always get him to do that for me, which is very kind of him. Once I've done all of that, the last step is to do my hands. So the hands is something that I struggled with for such a long time. If you go back to one of my early videos, you will see how bad my hands used to look. So when I do my tan on my hands now, I take off the gloves. Obviously at that point, my arm is super brown because I've got five layers and then my hand is like paper white. I literally get one pump of tan and I apply it to the back of my hand. Then what I do with the brush is blend that tan into like just the hand area, not the fingers, just the hand. It won't fully blend down, you'll still kind of have wet moussiness, that's fine. I just kind of pat it in, let it be wet and moussey. Then I do the exact same on the other hand. By the time you've done that, the tan has set a little bit on your hand. Then I drag it down the fingers and I just buff it in and around. Um, it doesn't matter too much if you've got like a line or anything like that here, that's fine. Buff it onto your palm a little bit, not fully, just a little bit, like blend it on. Usually one pump on each hand is enough to get it to blend with my arm. Your tan is going to take on your hands so much quicker and so much darker. Once I've done that with both my hands, I will get the makeup wipe that I used earlier and I just rub it like that between my hands to make sure there's not too much tan on my actual palm then this like sounds like it's super complicated but when you're actually doing it it takes like two minutes then I will grab some Nivea like I was saying earlier um, which is what I use to um, stop tan from grabbing to any dry areas so I apply the Nivea cream to my hands and I will just rub it like this within my palms that's when I start crossing my fingers this helps to blend the tan in between your fingers but after the first hour I will then do it over my entire hands just to help stop the tan from grabbing too much to my hands because that was 100% the worst mistake I was making with tanning was how the tan would grab on my hands and it would look awful. I always wear a full black onesie to bed when I've had a tan on. I call it my bronzy but I would recommend doing that just because it stops the tan from like transferring too much onto other things then you need to move on to maintenance so maintaining a tan is actually really easy all you need to do is moisturize loads so I moisturize using the same stuff that I prep with the Neutrogena range and I will literally just lather that on after every time I have a shower or a bath make sure I've got loads and loads and loads and loads of moisturizer on if you're feeling dry apply more moisturizer um, because the one thing that's going to keep your tan looking fresh and dark is moisturized skin if you want something that's going to help continue building your tan and it's also going to stop your tan from fading I would recommend using the body glow by skinny tan this is the best gradual tanner that I've ever found if I'm on holiday or something like that and I'm, I really want my tan to last as long as possible without having to apply a fresh one I will use this I find using this product can stretch my tan from being like a five day wear to like almost a 10 day wear normally. The one thing I would say about this is make sure you don't get it on your palms. So I would always recommend wearing your gloves when you're gonna apply this. And also make sure you don't get it on any dry areas because it will grab and you will end up with really, really, really dark elbows and knees and stuff like that. So try not to get it on your joints if you can. So that is everything for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed watching today's video video as much as I enjoyed creating it for you. If you did enjoy watching today's video, please feel free to leave me a massive like and subscribe down below. If you have got any friends or family who you think might enjoy my content, please feel free to share it with them. Don't forget to check out my Instagram. I will pop all the details on screen right now. Um, I'm really, really active on my Instagram recently. I'm on my stories like 24 seven. If you do have any questions about today's video or any video recommendations for me, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. But without further ado, I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.